edexitvideo.com. So this is a very quick clinical case, a patient, a young patient presented with a swollen red hot leg. It's been going on for a few days. What you're going to see in the first video is uh, the actual exam of what the leg looked like. You can hear some of the history on that patient. The second video clip will discuss the actual uh, laboratory findings as well as some of the treatment that was provided to that patient. Just since you've been in here? No, two days ago. Oh, okay. I don't see any difference. So you said you were doing some painting on your knees, mm -hmm. and that's how we got these abrasions. However, this one became infected and of course caused this swelling. He said it was much more swollen a few days ago. You can see there's definitely fluid either in the joint or in the bursa. And as the infection progresses, this whole leg becomes swollen and red. So we call this a, a, a bursitis, probably from skin infection, whether it be staph or strep, or the two more common bacteria. Possibly. Septic bursitis refers to the inflammation of the bursa that is due to infection, typically resulting from bacterial inoculation that is direct, i.e. a puncture wound, or that spreads from nearby tissues like cellulitis or the open sore in this case, or hematogenous like people with endocarditis. 20% of bursitis cases are septic, and 85% of septic bursitis occurs in men. You mean just since you've been in here? No, two days ago. Oh, okay. I don't see any difference. So, you said you were doing some painting on your knees. Mm -hmm. That's how we got these abrasions. However, this one became infected and, of course, caused this swelling. He said it was much more swollen mm -hmm. a few days ago. You can see there's definitely fluid either in the joint or in the bursa. And as the infection progresses, this whole leg becomes swollen and red. So we call this a, a, a bursitis, probably from skin infection, whether it be staph or strep, or the two more common bacteria, possibly joint involvement, so orthopedic is going to do a drainage later today. But the patient is diabetic and the sugar is high and ketones are high. So uh, we're giving IV antibiotics, IV fluids. And A comparison of both legs there. So on his blood work you can see an elevated white cell count of 12,000 and you can also see um, neutrophils are high uh, but more importantly the CO2 is 5 and almost 22 to 30 that means he's very very acidotic with an elevated anion gap of 27 normal 7 to 16. When this patient first presented to the emergency department he was breathing close to 40 times per minute. <sighs> He wasn't doing this on purpose. The body was telling him to do so because he was so acidotic that he was trying to blow off CO2 through breathing. By blowing off CO2, he gets rid of acid in his blood. Why is that? Because if you put CO2 into a fluid, in case the blood or the body itself, CO2 converts into bicarbonate. Bicarbonate releases H, hydrogen, thus creating acid in the body. So a patient was hyperventilating due to diabetic ketoacidosis and a profound rate is sometimes called Kusmao breathing. Sugar was 350. We gave him some IV insulin fluids and recheck sugars went down to 200s. And then um, here, moderate, moderate acetones indicating that he's indeed in DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. And uh, his Doppler of the extremity, make sure he didn't have a blood clot, was negative, so no DVT. So essentially we have a patient with a swollen red leg, starting in his knee, going all the way down to his foot, uh, probably from, from a bursitis or maybe even a, a septic joint. He, I call the orthopedic doctor who will do a drainage this afternoon. In the meantime, IV antibiotics, IV fluids management of the diabetes and go from there.